Hello everybody, The Nameless Narcissist here once again, simple man diagnosed with NPD, giving you the facts of narcissistic personality disorder and the things that go on in my head. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, but keep in mind I am no clinician and I can only speak to my own experiences. But I guess today we're going to be talking about a clinician, right? <clears throat> so the long-awaited uh, Dr. Romani video. Mm, this is a minefield for me because there are some very, I think this is going to be even more contentious than the Sam Vaknin video, honestly. You can go check that out if you want. But keep in mind, I'm not here to be like, oh, you should watch Dr. Romney. Oh, you shouldn't watch Dr. Romney. Oh, she's wrong. Oh, she's right. Or like I've seen some people accuse her of being a narcissist, which I disagree with, but nobody knows her well enough uh, to say that like at all, right? We don't know enough about her. Um, I That's why I'm always like, no, I'm not going to armchair diagnose celebrities because I don't know what their personal life is like. And these disorders have to be all pervasive and affect areas of your life. Um, anyways, so yeah, keep in mind that these are just my own opinions. This is not me saying whether or not you should watch a person, whatever. I'm going to try to be as fair to her as I can and reasonably critical. Um, I am going to point out some things I think she could do to uh, me personally make her, me personally think that would make her content more helpful for people. Anyway, and also I'm a better expert on narcissism than she, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm the best, I'm the best uh, narcissist. <clears throat> so I want to start out sa by saying, Dr. Romney does help a lot of people. I am never going to deny that. People who need to hear like, okay, your abuser is not being good to you. You need to get out. You need to be able to stand up for yourself. You need to not tolerate these behaviors. That's something that a lot of people when they're in these relationships need to hear, especially talking about some of the behaviors that may be abusive that, that have been normalized to these people, right? Of course, I don't agree with the fact that she purely talks about narcissism, though, um, because obviously narcissism isn't synonymous with abuse, and we shouldn't view abuse through the lens of narcissism because we may be missing important aspects of abuse. But I can see what, if her goal is to genuinely help people, I can see why she would hop on the narcissism bandwagon, in order, and that sounds bad, but it's not intended to be bad, um, in order to popularize her message and get it to the people that need it. But also, what about people who are being abused by people who aren't narcissists, right? Um, so it's a way to grow her channel, but also might be limiting to some people who need similar help. Because like, what if there's people out there who are like going through abuse, need some help like that, but they're like, oh, but my partner's not a narcissist, right? And whether the person is or not is kind of irrelevant if a person who is being abused doesn't think that they are a narcissist. <clears throat> and so, Dr. Romney is obviously very, very educated on MPD. Um, I've skimmed through her book and the first half of it I thought was like really good and described it to, mm, I wanna say to a T, but, I, but better than most clinicians would. On the other hand, I do think it's important to keep in mind narcissism is not her area of expertise. The only uh, papers that she has ever written have been about mental health effects from having HIV or AIDS, which not to say that you can't be an expert on MPD, it's just, I think, that's a thing that I, I, I'm a big fan of people fully understanding people's credentials, right? I'm always like, I'm not a clinician. I'm, I find myself very well educated on narcissism. And I also have personal experience. I think I'm a good resource, but I'm not a clinician. You shouldn't treat me as an expert because I'm not one. Um, while Dr. Romani arguably is an expert and has credentials, this still wasn't her main area of focus. Um, my next thing is that she really, she's posted like a handful of videos of four narcissists being like, oh, this is what you need to do to get help. Holy shit, they were some of the worst videos I've ever seen addressing narcissists. And I'm not saying that I dig at her. It just makes me really hope that she's not treating narcissists because every single one of those videos made me pissed off within the first five seconds. Um, it was very demanding and authoritarian, which in fairness, that's kind of what she's used to, right? It's like, you need to get out of this relationship. But telling a narcissist, you need to change, you need to have empathy, which that one annoyed me because it was like, I can't just grow emotional empathy. Um, like there's not much to, like that no narcissist is gonna be receptive to things like that. Um, and obviously going along with that because of the kind of content that she makes, no narcissist is going to want to listen to her even if it was a good video on it. Um, because again, she does associate narcissism with abuse and to the varying degrees that that's true, 
to me is irrelevant when it comes to the fact that people who are narcissistic aren't going to watch her videos and be like, oh yeah, that's me, I should go get help. Um, I mean, hell, I actually had a lot of imposter syndrome about my narcissism when I was watching uh, Dr. Romney because I was like, a lot of these things I don't do. She does the classic thing of identifying the behaviors relatively well, but not the internal motivations. She, in fairness, she did, so I'm going to do a review of three videos I watched on her recently, um, but she did mention in one of those videos that a lot of these behaviors were uh, subconscious, which I was very appreciative of because that is a very true thing. I'm not like out here being like, I'm going to deva I'm going to love bomb and devalue this person just to hurt them because I hate them. Um, and I really appreciated that she uh, spoke on that. Um, also, and like this kind of ties into the credentials thing. I really don't like when clinicians use buzz terms like, hoovering or discard or love bombing because those aren't in the literature these are not behaviors that are recorded in literature and studied these are just and these are behaviors that most people can exhibit i'm not saying that there's not a specific pattern of abuse that can be um dealt that can be um, used by narcissists right but using these buzz terms is not um I don't find it very professional, but then again, I guess she isn't really intending to be professional in these. That sounded wrong. She's not, this isn't for a professional audience, uh, is what I meant to say. Um, and yeah, it's just, just to go off that a little bit more, it's just, um, I just don't think, like, I feel like the best way for a lot of people to heal and to prevent toxic relationships like this is to get narcissists into therapy and people who are vulnerable to um, abusive and or toxic relationships. I don't feel, I feel like she's really good at the second half, not the first part though, because again, uh, how, if there isn't some degree of compassion there, how are we supposed to, um, how, how are narcissists supposed to get into therapy? How are they supposed to expect to be into therapy? These are people that have, don't, not just don't have empathy for everybody else, they don't have empathy for themselves. And I think we have to show them some of that in order to actually get them into therapy. Um, also, she ignores some of some major statistics about NPD that I think are very, very important. Uh, for example, that we have a very high suicide rate. We're a very uh, vulnerable population to suicide, around 20%. Um, I can link that study if anybody wants to read it. And not to mention, she, she is always like, oh, narcissists that go to treatment are unicorns. And it's like, maybe narcissists who accept that they're narcissists are, but it's estimated that 8 to 20% of people in outpatient treatment are narcissists. So a lot of us do have personal suffering that we are, and it's making us choose to go to therapy. We probably just don't know what our issue is exactly. And then one thing I really, really despise that she does is that she justifies the fact that she cannot call, um, is that like, although she can't say somebody's MPD, she can call them a narcissist because a narcissist is a um, descriptive term, not a diagnostic one. And she's a clinician. Any any time she says narcissist, people are going to be thinking NPD. I think that is very dishonest of her to say because I don't think anybody is dumb enough to think, oh no, she's not talking about narcissistic personality disorder. That person's just a narcissist. Half the people, like I use the term narcissist, and I mean, how look at my? It's not the nameless narcissistic guy with narcissistic personality disorder. It's a nameless narcissist. Anybody when they hear narcissist is going to be thinking about the disorder. Um, I got a little bit aggressive there, um, and I want to clarify again, I do think Dr. Romney has a good place in people's healing, right? But your healing doesn't end there. Eventually, I, I at least I believe understanding and compassion, even at a distance, is very, very important. Um, I don't think anybody, can, while holding on to hate and thinking they were abused by a monster uh, and that abuse was personal, I don't think anybody can fully, truly heal. Um, but yeah, those are some of my, basically some of my issues and my thoughts on her. Is she, would I go to her personally to learn about NPD? No. Would I do it to learn about abuse or recommend her for people who are in abusive relationships? Yeah, probably both of those. Me, eh, I don't know if I'd recommend her, but I definitely, if I wanted to learn about abuse, I definitely would. Um, anyways, so now we got, so here I watched three videos. One of them I really didn't like, one of them I was kind of on the fence about, and the other I did really like. The first one was, Refusing to split the bill. So I get it. Dr. Romani is a content creator, first of all. Um, and some of her 
one, she needs to find a lot of content to be able to share. Uh, and at the same time, some of them are going to be more ridiculous than others. For example, when she talked about how you can tell who a narcissist is by their eyebrows, um, that was in a study which was hilarious. The correlation was very, very, I actually looked in the study. It was very, very, the correlation was very, very low and the sample size was like, it was really small. It was like 40 or something like that. Um, and she just kind of talked about how like narcissists will feel entitled to you paying for them, which I think is not true. Narcissists are more likely to foot the bill because they want to show off how wealthy they are. I've done that before when I had no money where I'm like, I want to show that I have money, that nobody needs to take care of me, that I'm self-sufficient. Um, and then fucking like made myself broke. Um, that was a little bit of a petty thing for me to touch on. But like, there's no indications of narcissism, I guess, in, uh, unless you count entitlement. That really went into that. She made a video called Love Bombing, Can Love Bombing Be Good? Or something like that, which I thought was interesting. And she said, uh, well, the first thing she says is that it doesn't have to be, um, as long as it's not being used as a distraction, right? And, or you're using it as a distraction. She kind of went on to say that as long as you're not ignoring the bad parts of the relationship because, like, the love bombing, in quotes, is uh, so good. And she, like, talks about how, like, you know, normal people love bomb too. And I think that separating it from this association with narcissism and how this is some malicious intent, um, she kind of implies that part too. But, like, it, showing that anybody can love bomb and that's not malicious no, most of the time. Even with narcissists, it's not malicious most of the time. I'd say the vast majority of the time. When I love bomb, it's because I'm like, I finally found my perfect person. I finally found the, um, the person who's my soulmate, yeah, to the point that I ignore all their flaws or anything like that. I'm hyper-focusing on everything that we have in common. I'm not even considering them as a real person, just as a construct for me. And this isn't conscious, of course, just as a construct that fits in my story. Um, she also pointed out that not to feed into a paranoia of looking out for narcissists on first dates. A lot of people ask me, it's like, how do I identify a narcissist early on? And I'm like, you can't. There's no way. You cannot know enough about a person in one date to really um, be able to tell. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some red flags on a first date that's like, that are going to be fucking crimson, right? There's no way you're going to miss them. He's like, I like killing cats. And it's like, okay, so check, please. Um, but hyper fixating and being paranoid about um like red flags that, that's that is not helpful to anybody dating should be fun to some degree or at least constructive and you won't be able to focus on the person if you're just trying to identify every flaw or how they can hurt you it's a form of hyper vigilance probably a trauma response for a lot of people especially people who have been hurt uh, majorly in relationships abusive or not and again um she talked about how, and this, this I really like that she mentioned actually, she said that by time that you're all in, they have started the devaluation process and um, are going to eventually discard you or something like that. But she pointed out it was subconscious, which I really appreciated. Not to mention that she is right, actually. Um, about four months in is when usually the devaluation of the narcissist uh, relationships end. And that's usually actually the peak happiness for most healthy relationships. Um, that, that was just a little tidbit that I learned from Todd Grande, I think. So I thought it was really interesting that she pointed that out. And then she went, um, so then the one video that I really liked because I could actually relate to it was bad advice for dealing with narcissistic relationships. And she actually, I actually learned something in this that I really, that I thought was really cool. Like, you know, people will be like, oh, you have to take care of your inner child, self-care, self-help, meditate, go on walks. Don't get me wrong, those things can be good, right? But she points out that when you have gone through a traumatic relationship, maybe sometimes to the point of CPTSD or just trauma in general, your body is still in a flight or fight mode basically constantly. And doing things that are relaxing, that's putting your guard down. That's going to stress you out even more if you're trying to do self-help and stuff like that. It can be bad not to sometimes because it can lead to more rudimentation and stuff like that. But it, I really enjoyed that I learned that because I could never really describe to people why I found it so their advice so worthless when they told me to practice self-help and stuff like that. Not that it is worthless advice. I hope eventually I get to the point that I can do things like that and it's effective. But like inner child crap and meditation, like they just don't work for me, not at this point at least. And she also said especially, but she did also say especially for um, 
if you were being attacked for doing self-help and I was uh, by your narcissist. I was like, well, why would I do that? I, I can't like, cause that's a, that's an issue I have with just people in general and their conception of narcissism. They view it as like this ultra controlling relationship and potentially it can be. But in my case, it's always just been, I was criminally distant. I just didn't care. I wasn't invested in a relationship. I was just like very dismissive. I didn't really pay attention to their needs. I was off doing my own thing, et cetera, et cetera. And me doing my own thing does not mean cheating, by the way. I have cheated before and I own up to that. But that doesn't mean that, that's not what I was talking about. And that, those were two very isolated instances for completely different reasons, but it's outside the scope of this video. Um, on the whole, um, I don't have, like, he, he, obviously I'm a little bit biased against Dr. Romney because I am a narcissist. Um, and I do think that there are some very valid um, things I have against her. Because um, even when she talks about some of the suffering that goes in with narcissistic personality disorder, it's never from a compassionate lens, right? And this is a really weird thing that I always notice. Like, it, go look up, like, an article, and if it even talks about the suffering of narcissists, they do this really weird thing where they talk about our suffering in almost a contemptuous way. And Dr. Romney kind of does that too. And it's like, I think that her content would um, improve a lot if in some videos she was compassionate towards narcissists. It's like, yeah, these are people who suffer a lot. That doesn't mean that you should stay with them. It doesn't mean that you should just hope that they're going to change. You still need to put yourself first. But um, there should be some compassion there because again, I think that that's more conducive to healing than just continuing to hate and fixating on it, right? I have a friend who says the best way to tell how healed you are from a narcissistic relationship is to ask your is to ask them how many Dr. Romney videos they're watching a day at this point, or I guess a week, whatever. Um, and then how many you're watching of mine, but the other way around. I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyways, I hope this seemed fair. I thought it was and informative, whatever, or insightful. I don't know what the right word is, but. Uh, Either way, thank you for coming and uh, take your fucking meds, please.